It's that time of year where we get a kind of a better idea about the Idaho drought situation, the water situation. You kind of take a look at the snow still in the mountains, how much water is in that snow, how much water is in our reservoirs, and you try to balance them all out. And they're crucial components for Idaho's ag industry, from big businesses to small farms. It also impacts people and businesses that depend on the rivers and the reservoirs for outdoor sports and activities. Don't forget about the fishing industry either, crucial to all of these industries. Last year, there were concerns that a long-term drought is going to be a problem that the protection, the projection, I should say, staying true, or are we going to see these things kind of improve because we haven't started out so well this year. Joe Paris spoke with Idaho drought and water experts for the current lay of the land and where things look like they're heading. After a disappointing winter precipitation season, southwest Idaho is now faced with significant drought issues. So it's looking um, pretty grim. Some of our, we're seeing some of our, uh, our model results are showing that we're gonna come short in the Boise system about 300,000 acre feet around there. Ryan Hedrick monitors the water and drought situation for the Bureau of Reclamation. He says the dry situation last year helped set up the current drought reality. Our carryover was low this year. And so when you stack a, a low carryover year with you know, a poor runoff year, then it, it, it affects, it's a larger, you know, it's cumulative on top of that. Idaho is not alone. You can see almost the entire western United States is in drought. Idaho Department of Water Resources hydrologist David Hokma says predictions show that southern Idaho will experience widespread drought and water shortages this summer. Right now we have severe drought um, up in the headwaters of the Boise River, out across the central mountains, and pretty much everywhere rimming the Snake River Plain. Um, and we're expecting that this will all probably um, become severe drought within the next few weeks. The drought and water situation has critical impacts on Idaho agriculture operations. They will be forced to make decisions on how to use limited resources. They will often reduce, you know, how much water they use throughout the year. And they'll be trying to save water as well. They'll be planting crops that aren't water heavy and in need a bunch of water is probably not gonna be a lot of corn or beets growing this year. Um, so they're doing everything they can to, to, to try to get through this, these two tough years. The snowpack in Idaho's mountains is a major factor in this. The snowpack has declined significantly since January 9th in every basin south of the Salmon River, leaving the stream flow forecast to be 20 to 70% below average for the Snake River, Big Lost, Big Wood, Little Wood, Salmon Falls, Boise Payette, and Weezer River. The only slightly good news for agriculture, they had a feeling this was coming. This drought, unlike last year's drought, has been a long time in coming. And so we have had ample warning that the uh, water supply conditions are looking rough. So I believe people will be a lot more prepared this season for the drought than they were last year. The drought will certainly be visible for Idahoans out on the Boise River system or up at Lucky Peak looking to recreate. Yeah, Lucky Peak will be much lower than it, it normally is. Um, it could be anywhere from, you know, 15 to 20 feet um, from full this year. And so we'll see drop off on boat ramps and some of that may get affected. The reservoir system in the Boise and Payette River basins show that Lucky Peak is at 52% full, Anderson Ranch is at 39% full, and Arrow Rock at 89% full. To conserve water for agriculture operations, flows from Lucky Peak will be at a minimum release, meaning that the Boise River will be lower and slower for now. There is hope that the upcoming summer months will be better than 2021, but the weather patterns will have a major impact on the situation in the coming weeks and months. We're not expecting a real hot summer like last year, but if we were to get that, um, the situation would degrade pretty quickly and farmers could find themselves, you know, in a really rough spot. That was a one in a hundred year event, but sometimes those events come back to back. It doesn't mean we, we're going to wait another 100 years till we see the next one. And they seem to be coming more frequently than they have over those last 100 years. And heat is one thing, but farmers still need water. And we talked to uh, the farmers we spoke with last year who only had basically a shortest growing season ending in June than they've ever had. 
and they think it's going to be just as bad this year. But agriculture is one thing. We get this question all the time, Joe, yeah. because a lot of people moving in to the Treasure Valley and to Idaho in general. With the desperate concern of drought in our state, this one was sent in from Melanie, by the way, why do they continue to issue building permits and not announcing early mandates for rotation of wa lawn watering, upcoming season, washing of cars, all of that kind of stuff that, you know, where we use a lot of water at our homes, what about, I don't know, conserving water residentially? So conserving water residentially is a good idea. And the experts I spoke with today say if you want to conserve water on things like watering your lawn or landscaping at your personal home, cutting back on that is going to help the situation. But Brian, we need to think about the water that we use in our personal lives and really things for car washes and, you know, watering our lawns and drinking versus the water that is specifically protected and put aside for the agricultural community. Uh, when they have to flood their farms and stuff and they mm -hmm. have to work on all the irrigation, that water is not one in one with the water that Suez is working with, for example. Now, this is not exclusive saying there's only one water source that goes one place and only one water source that goes the other place. But they are separate. They are separate. There is a mix over. So if you do kind of step back on your personal use, especially on your lawn care, it could help somebody in the future. Will we see the rotating lawn schedules like, you know, back in the 80s? Maybe. But for now, it's wait and see. The priority here, though, is that irrigation water. Yeah, and this is going to be all over the entire West, so it's not just going to be back in the 80s. We're going to see some of that stuff happening in states across the West this season already. All right, thank you very much, Joe.